What's up YouTube, this is Galacticod, and I'm coming at you now with an updated version of my Heraldic Beast deck. So basically with the release of Dragons of Legend, I had to reconfigure the deck to include some of the cards that came out in that set. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and get right into things. Alright, so for monsters, we are of course playing three copies of Leo. Uh, probably the best card in the deck, definitely the MVP Warrior. He has 2,000 attack, and for a 4-star monster, that's pretty darn good. Plus, whenever this card is sent to the graveyard, whether it be from the deck, the hand, the field, or as an exceed material, his effect will trigger, allowing you to grab any other Heraldic Beast monster from your deck and add it to your hand. Definitely very useful. From there, we have three copies of Abracon Wet. Nice solid 1800 beater. He's a wind attribute, which is really helpful for getting out our lightning Chidoris. He's got a somewhat useful effect. Basically, if there's two or more of him in the graveyard, you can remove one of them and then add any Heraldic Beast monster from your graveyard back to your hand. So it's good for getting back Leos or any other Heraldic Beast monsters that you may be in need of. From there, we're playing two copies of the Twin-Headed Eagle. This card has an awesome effect that comes in more handy than not. If he's in the graveyard, along with two other Heraldic Beast monsters, and you have an Exceed monster out on the field, which sounds kind of like a weird stipulation, but it does happen a lot in this deck, you can remove him from play in the graveyard, target those two other Heraldic Beast monsters that are in your graveyard, and then place them as Exceed materials under the Exceed monster on the field. And then finally, we're playing just one Heraldic Beast Basilic. His effect is pretty simple. After he's been involved in battle, after damage calculations, destroy whatever monster he battled with. And that's going to do it for the Heraldic Beast portion of the deck. For support monsters, we have three copies of Kage to Kage. Works really great in the deck. Awesome for spamming out rank 4 monsters. From there, we have two copies of Summoner Monk. Now, I know a lot of people don't really care for Summoner Monk because you have to get rid of a spell card, but we play a ton of spells in this deck, and there's a lot of options for discarding it with Summoner Monk. From there, we're playing two copies of Maxi and two copies of Effect Veiler, and that rounds up our monster count. So for spells, we're playing three copies of Advanced Heraldry Art. This is kind of like a miracle fusion for Exceed monsters in Heraldic deck. Essentially how this card works is you target two Heraldic Beast monsters in your graveyard, you special summon them, and then immediately Exceed summon with them. So it's pretty epic, great for getting out cards like Lightning Chidori or Number 101 or whatever you'll need. From there, we're playing three copies of Heraldry Reborn. And this card is just like the name implies. It's a monster reborn for any Heraldic Beast monster. Plain and simple. Some people don't like to play the full max out of either one of these. You're able to thin your deck pretty fast and fill up your graveyard, so I don't understand why people don't like playing three copies of them each. But I do also think that Summoner Monk helps alleviate maybe some of those dead hands where you draw too many of these right off the bat. Or if you just don't need them at the time and you want to dig in your deck instead of taking something out of the graveyard, Summoner Monk also helps alleviate that. On that same note, we were playing two copies of Soul Charge. I thought about having three in the deck. I've played three before, but we already have three other regular Monster Reborn cards. And with these, we could actually still have a battle phase. A lot of times with Soul Charge, I might just go ahead and dump it with Summoner Monk to go ahead and special summon out a monster from my deck. It really depends on if it's late or early game. One of the things I do like about Soul Charge, though, is that you can bring back the Exceed monsters with it, and then you can use Twin Headed Eagle's effect to go ahead and put materials that are in the graveyard back under that monster. So pretty awesome. Then we have uh, two copies of MST, two copies of Forbidden Lance, a Foolish Burial, great for getting your Leo or Twin Headed Eagle into the graveyard, and then one Dark Hole. So lots of spells, lots of discard outlets for Summoner Monk. And that's going to round up our spell cards. For traps, we have pretty basic stuff. We have a Bottomless Trap Hole, uh, Compulse, uh, Solemn Warning, Torrential Tribute, two Fiendish Chains, a Mirror Force, and a D Prison to kind of give us a nice eclectic mix of different trap cards. I thought about including Wiretap in here. Perhaps I will in future builds, but as it stands right now, I'm pretty happy with the trap lineup as it is. All right, and that's going to do it for that. So for the extra deck, we're playing two copies of uh, Evil Swarm Exoton Knight, two copies of Number 101, two copies of Lightning Chidori, uh, one copy of King of the Feral Imp, one Lavaval Chain, great for sending our Leo to the graveyard and kind of getting our engine going, uh, one Gaga -ga -ga Cowboy, one Maestro, one Photon Popal Operative, one Digesso Emerald, great for recycling our Heraldic Beast Monsters and being able to go for plays over and over again, one Abyss Dweller, uh, one Diamond Dire Wolf, and then finally one Crazy Box, just in case we won't run across any of those uh, Skill Drain variant decks. Alright, so just to kind of give you some of the ideas of the different kind of pluses you can get off the deck, I'm going to show you a couple of quick little combos that you'll do most of the time in the deck. You'll start off by summoning your Heraldic Beast Leo. This allows you to special summon out your Kage to Kage, and you'll go immediately into an Exceed Summon. 
bring out uh, King of the Feral Imp. This is an awesome first turn play, especially if your opponent doesn't have Effect Veiler, which a lot of people are not using right now in this format. You can detach your Leo to add a Kage to Kage to your hand. This will also trigger Leo's effect, allowing you to grab a Heraldic Beast Monster, and then you can grab uh, two cards from your deck, a Kage to Kage and any Heraldic Beast Monster, and add them to your hand. You've now essentially plussed, as you have six cards in hand and then one on the field. Plus, you set yourself up nicely for the second turn, as you already have another Rank 4 Exceed play ready to go. Alright, so for the next combo, it's the same scenario. You're going to Normal Summon out your Heraldic Beast Leo, Special Summon out your Kage to Kage, go immediately into a Rank 4. This time, we're going to bring out Lavavel Chain for our first turn play. Now, unlike before, we're not going to detach the Leo first. We're going to detach the Kage to Kage and send it to the Graveyard. With its effect, we will now be able to send uh, Heraldic Beast Leo from our deck to the graveyard. Leo's effect will activate, allowing us to grab any Heraldic Beast monster and add it to our hand. This works really good because this way we still have a Leo under our Lavavel Chain, meaning that even if they bring something out that crashes over Lavavel Chain, when Lavavel Chain dies, it's going to send the other Heraldic Beast Leo to the graveyard, allowing us to grab yet another uh, Heraldic Beast monster from our deck and add it to our hands. This allows us to plus no matter what happens. Now, if by some chance they don't want to do that and they allow your Lavavel Chain to actually stay on the field, the next turn, you can go ahead and detach your Leo again, this time sending a twin-headed uh, eagle to the graveyard. Leo's effect will activate, allowing us to grab another Heraldic Beast card, add it to our hand. Then we'll use twin-headed eagle's effect, remove it from play, and then put two more materials back under Lavavel Chain. So now if they destroy the Lavavel Chain on their turn, the uh, Heraldic Beast Leo will go to the graveyard, activating his effect and allowing you to grab another Heraldic Beast monster and add it to your hand. If it manages to stay alive, you can detach, uh, send another Twin-Headed Eagle to the graveyard, and then go ahead and add another Heraldic Beast card to your hand. So either way, you're plussing up no matter what. All right, YouTube, and there you have it. This was my updated Heraldic Beast deck profile. I have done a bunch of duels featuring this deck up on DevPro that I recorded and that I saved the replays for. Unfortunately, DevPro has been having some issues as of late, and, and a lot of those files are either corrupt or getting errors. Hopefully they're not completely destroyed and unusable, as I do like quite a bit of them. And with any luck, I should be able to get a video out at some point featuring those duels. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see on that. Anyhow, in the comment section below, remember to let me know what you think of this deck. And I guess that's it for now. This is Galactic God.